I am joined today by Shalom Michaeli, Managing Director of Fiber in EMEA. How are you doing today? Good, good to be here. If folks don't know what Fiber does, give them the skinny. What is the, what's the slug line? Of course, Fiber is an independent mobile growth platform. Fiber helps mobile app developers and gaming publishers to monetize their games and applications by a variety of solutions that we have, including the Fairbit mediation, the Fiber marketplace, the offerable edge, uh, we support the gaming app economy by providing transparent uh, tools for them to understand how to monetize their users and their audiences much better. We've had a very strange last couple of years, which I'm sure produced some interesting metrics and behaviors. Uh, and a lot of people have noticed a huge uptick in basically any kind of digital online consumption. It's all gone up. How do we maintain that going forward? How do you keep people engaged in the way that they were now that they're allowed back into the real world? And what are you guys working on for 2022? So the past two years were, they were intensive for everyone. And for us, you know, in the past two years, we also grew massively with the revenues and we got acquired by Digital Turbine uh, alongside at Colony and Appreciate. And uh, for us, you know, we are bringing those team members together in a much more constructive way that enables them to go and see clients together now. So for us, bringing the digital turbine at Colony and Fiber and appreciate teams together to those kind of events is a message of what is that we can achieve together with those teams that are coming and speaking about their products, but not from a single point of view, but actually from the digital turbines point of view what exactly that we can achieve and what kind of the benefit and the value that we give our clients when we're speaking from not necessarily single areas but from a one mutual area of digital turbine and that might be a mediation that might be an offerable that might be user acquisition the pre-installs that we run with our clients the user acquisition benefits that our clients get with the accessibility to exclusive OEMs and carriers out there uh, so from our point of view is bringing people into the one, one vision that we have as Digital Turbine, which is basically an independent mobile world platform, which is so important to so many publishers these days. So I've taken a look at what you guys offer, and when it comes to things like bidding on impressions, you talk about replacing the manual waterfall optimization that people use with a fully programmatic system, which is what you guys offer. What are the benefits of going fully programmatic? Sure, so the idea is when we speak about mediation, and fair bid is our mediation, why? Because we're bidding in a fair way within all the, within all the networks. You have to understand how the mediation actually started around a decade, more than a decade ago. And when it started, it started with estimated CPMs. Nobody actually knew, no network actually knew to predict what would be the worth of each and every user in the real time. So they were using estimated CPMs. With the time, with the evolution of the mobile industry, we found that there is an opportunity to actually bid on each and every user in real time. And that started with DSPs, with demand, part, with the demand side partners, and eventually evolved into the networks. So networks started to bid into the mediation. And those bids in real time managed to not only increase the efficiency of the operational side, but actually to grow the revenues for the publisher. Because from the economical point of view, when you bid in real time, you, incre you create a competition. Because comp competition creates increasing revenues for the clients. So from our point of view, a bidding is the ultimate solution for the industry and for the publishers because it creates increasing revenues, it decreases the operational uh, point of, of managing the entire system, it creates much higher scale for the, for, the, for the client, for the publishers. Well, talking about clients, you kind of stress the importance of transparency or certainly transparency is something that I'm noting, noticing developers are asking a lot from uh, the monetization platforms and the uh, services. They're saying, tell me about the data, show me the data. Uh, Obviously, there's a limit to how transparent, I guess, you can be with things like GDPR and whatnot, but from your perspective, is transparency a very useful thing or can it sometimes get in the way of doing the job? Transparency is extremely important. There, in, in our industry, the past 10 years, there was uh, sometimes a mistrust between the networks to the publishers. And this mistrust is, uh, is it starts to re be reduced due to the fact that we give more data points and more solutions 
to the publishers that will actually enable them to understand what happens with their inventory. The, the consolidation that happens now in the industry is a good thing because within this consolidation, publishers have more capabilities to understand what exactly is the worth of their, of their supply. And transparency also comes from different er areas, area like if you have a mediation and you have a studio, how can you ensure that you actually give the best benefits to your clients and not to your studio? How do you basically balance the needs to build solutions for your studio, but also at the same time build the right solutions for all the clients that are there? So transparency is, is extremely important and within Fairbit, we enable publishers to actually see the auction audit. This auction audit gives publishers the ability to see in each and every instance what is the price that was conducted by all the networks. They can see exactly how much each and every bids or we estimate, if it's an estimated and mediated network, how much we estimate is going to be the price for this specific instance and displayed for the publisher for him to have exact understanding what is the worth of each and every user in each and every time. The data only gets you so far. You can have like reams of data, piles of numbers, statistics everywhere, but it's kind of about the analysis, isn't it? It's about what you do and how you use the data. How do you ensure that you're not just drowning clients in numbers and saying, here, full transparency, here's all the numbers, but what do they then do with that information? And how do you make sure that it's being used in the right way in order to benefit the clients? It's, it's a great question, and we need to understand what the publisher's goals are. If publisher's goals are only to increase revenues, that's the one thing. Increase retention, that's another thing. If they would like to have additional ads embedded into their games, for example, brands, if they would like to see variety of additional ad formats, then we can share with this data. We can start getting first and second party data, which, you know, in our industry also sometimes becomes a little bit limited due to privacy issues, of course, but we can get this data and start creating deals on behalf of the publisher. I mean, saying real platforms and good, strong mediation companies can create those deals and environments in which they provide the bottom line of the data to the publisher and come and say, upon this data, I've managed to create those kind of deals for you. And those deals are, uh, are, are eventually resulted with this an X, Y, and Z revenue. So there is too much data out there, I would say. Publishers not necessarily have to have all of them. They need to understand what are their goals and eventually starting deducing this amount of data to the right metrics that eventually result in the right KPIs for them. Retentions, UA, revenues, and etc. And the mediation platforms, the account managers, the product teams on the mediation side need to be very minded. The, the data teams, the science team on the media need to be minded on how we bring this data point to the publisher that will be constructed and not just only throw the data on the publisher without responsibility. Otherwise, it's just, just not effective. I was talking to PlayStack earlier about non-interruptive ad solutions, which is something I'm hearing a lot more these days, people talking about this, this kind of technology. And I noticed it used on your site when you're referring to your offer wall that you have. What is the offer wall and how does that work and how is it non-interruptive? Right. So offer wall is, uh, is our solution, is one of our solutions, offer wall edge, which is part of the out, play, out game play you know, scenario. So you use the offer wall when you are not necessarily actively playing the game. And that's a not intrusive unit uh, ad format. And what happens with this ad format is that it enables publishers and users to increase the uh, ability to create additional, uh, ad additional operation within the game by conducting different actions. Actions like, for example, uh, achieving additional ad additional level within a different game or uh, for example answering a survey so those areas which are enabling also to bring brands together so for example you can answer a survey of uh, one of the biggest brands out there and if you answer the survey of a brand then you receive a specific reward for example X amount of coins and those elements that are non intrusive are enabling users to continue playing the game in a, in, in, in a way that is basically uh, non-intrusive, as you said.